So hi, Microbe Hunter here, and uh, usually I answer a lot of uh, technical questions, uh, technical microscopy related question in, uh, questions in this channel. Um, but uh, today I got a beginner's question, uh, but I have to tell you that this one is actually probably even more difficult to answer uh, than some of the other questions that I've been uh, talking about in this channel. Um, I'm just going to read it out to you and then I'd like uh, to simply talk about it a little bit. Okay, here, here we go. I recently got a microscope and I'm sort of clueless. I don't know how often I should clean it, where to store slides and how to even make slides. I'm so confused uh, with the different types of mounting mediums and what I'm allowed to use for specific specimens. I got a toolbox and kept the materials I use for making the slides and other things, cover glasses, slides, lens tissue, plastic specimen vials, sample bottles, and about 10 other things. All I really need to know is how to make some slides. I tried making temporary ones, but now I want to move on to making it last for a little longer, maybe even years. I searched up uh, some mounting medium to buy, but I couldn't find any. And when I did, I didn't know whether it was the type that I should use. I guess uh, I became slightly obsessed with your channel and got the microscope thinking that I could just watch your tutorials, but I guess I was wrong. It's a lot to take in. I feel like uh, I'll be asking questions often now, but I'm doing my best to make my own research. Thank you so much and I hope that this wasn't too confusing. Well, of course, thank you very much uh, for this question and of course there are several questions that I wanted to address here. Um, essentially, it is... Um, yeah, let me, let me take it one by one. Um, first of all, concerning the cleaning of the microscope, how often should you clean the microscope? And uh, the answer is as little as possible. And uh, generally, um, also try to avoid uh, using um, any solvents on the microscope. Uh, usually, uh, there are, it, it is sometimes necessary to wipe away immersion oil from the objective, from the oil immersion objective, if necessary. But it is rarely necessary to actually use solvents um, unless the uh, objective really has become contaminated with some substance that requires uh, a solvent. And uh, generally the biggest problem uh, I think is, is kind of keeping the microscope dust free. And uh, there are a couple of ways. One thing, way of course is, is to use a, a microscope dust cover, something that uh, yeah, one should do in any case, uh, but even that is not going to uh, completely prevent uh, from dust accumulating on the microscope. And in this case, I recommend that you use some kind of a brush uh, to remove uh, the dust or also compressed air. But please do not use the compressed air uh, that you can buy ready uh, in, in bottles ready made for, for computers, for example, because um, this is not just air. It contains some other um, additives and that might not be good for the optics. So I recommend that you actually make your own compressed air bottle. I've made some videos uh, with this where I use the bicycle pump to pump uh, a plastic bottle full of air and then I use that and this works uh, pretty well. So I would say that the biggest uh, thing for cleaning a microscope or the most important one is actually trying to remove the dust and um, then actually ob the objective should not be cleaned unless it is really necessary. So that is basically uh, one thing. And the second thing is, is uh, about the, the, the making of, of, of slides, of permanent slides and uh, the whole issue with mounting media. To tell you yes, you are indeed right. Uh, obtaining a mounting medium these days is not quite easy for several reasons. First of all, not all chemical companies sell to private people. That is one problem. And another thing is, is that some mounting media are not healthy and they contain a solvent, organic solvent like xylene, for example, which you should not really have in your household. Um, they're fine maybe in the lab, but at home, maybe, maybe not such a good idea. And over Amazon, I remember they used to sell mounting media as well, but not anymore. And I think uh, they have become a little bit stricter concerning the shipping of hazardous materials, especially those that contain organic solvents. And many mounting media do contain organic solvents. So I agree with you, they are a little bit difficult uh, to obtain, but I do have a, a few suggestions or solutions. First of all, um, there is a company in, the, uh, in Great Britain, in the UK, called uh, Brunel Microscopes. I'm not affiliated with them, but I already ordered from them before and they have a, si a web page where they sell different types of, uh, different types of, of mounting media and you might uh, have a look uh, there. Number one. Number two, um, there are certain alternatives that you can use which actually work more or less well, but I encourage you to try those first before you spend a lot of time finding mounting media and one of those alternatives is, is clear nail polish which can be bought pretty much any, anywhere for, for quite a low price. And uh, clear nail polish generally is nitrocellulose. 
um, it has the disadvantage that it likes to shrink and therefore make bubbles when it dries. However, um, I have al already used it and also successfully before because if the bubbles are at a place where they don't disturb them, who cares, okay? Um, additionally, I recommend that you buy yourself some nail polish remover or acetone, but again, be careful that those substances are also not always quite healthy when you inhale them. And then what you can do is, is you can take a, a, the, the, the nail polish remover, you can put the specimen into the nail polish remover to maybe remove all of the excess water that is still in there and then um, transfer it uh, from the nail polish remover into uh, the clear nail polish on your slide and then you have to wait a few hours uh, for it to dry. Um, if the bubbles um, are too strong because the medium shrinks, then I suggest that you experiment with a more and less clear nail polish. So maybe you can just uh, do some empty slides where you simply um, add more or less of the nail polish. Or you can try to allow some of the solvent to evaporate, open your windows or do this outside. And this kind of thickens the nail polish a little bit because some of the solvent evaporates. And maybe this can also influence a little bit much um, on how it shrinks, okay? And also the quantity that you use on the slide also determines on how much shrinkage there is and how many bubbles are formed. But that is something that you have to experiment around with. But I would say try clear nail polish first. And I know of people who have actually used clear nail polish also at university to make their permanent slides there because for their specimens it, it worked. Now one of the questions is, was is which uh, mounting medium should you use? And it is indeed the case that uh, the, yeah, there are different ones to choose from and different mounting media are actually suited or suitable for different specimens. Wanted to give you an example, um, for example, um, fast, very fast drying mounting media are sometimes used at, uh, in pathology in hospitals because they need to quickly make sections of tissue and it has to dry quickly. Um, but uh, those fast drying mounting media sometimes do not have this long term um, storage ability. Okay, um, because uh, when the medium dries quickly, then there is not enough time for the mounting medium to actually infiltrate the specimen very well. Um, so you see there's a trade-off here. Um, some mounting media are not compatible with the specimen because the mounting medium, which might contain an organic solvent, dissolves some of the pigments that are in the specimen or maybe it's not compatible with some of the stains that you've used, if you have used stains. Um, and sometimes uh, the refractive index of the mounting medium is, is, is not correct and, and then you're not able to see those details that you want to see. So you see there are so many different parameters around here and uh, especially if you're a hobby or an amateur microscopist, you might not consider all of these aspects like refractive index really important. I mean, you just want to have a mounting medium uh, to make some permanent slides and to practice a little bit some of the slide making, right? Um, so in this case, I think what is more important is, is that the mounting medium is safe um, and uh, yeah, reasonably easy to use. Um, and for this reason, I do recommend that you experiment around first with clear nail polish. If you have the possibility to obtain Uperol, uh, Uperol um, is also a mounting medium that I personally like to use a lot, has a very long drying time of around one and a half to two months. You have to clip the slide horizontally during that time. Um, and it is uh, quite suitable, especially for mounting insect parts. Apparently people who are doing insect uh, microscopy, they like to use Uperol a lot. Um, however, it's also become more difficult to obtain. If you, for example, are interested in mounting pollen, uh, pollen is very water sensitive, then you have to use glycerol jelly, um, which is a water-based mounting medium and which does not become completely hard. Um, so that it retains a little bit of the moisture as well. Um, water organisms like uh, protozoa are very, very sensitive to water loss and they will shrink immediately. You ha also have to use a water-based mounting medium for them. Um, so, and you see that uh, it, it's complex, right? Um, there's so many factors to consider. Um, and, and if you start to go on that level, um, I would say many people are probably going to give up even before they've tried it because there's so many reasons uh, not to try a mounting medium because yeah, and then you have to spend money for it and it might not work for everything and, and, and so many uncertainties. So I would say forget about all of that um, but simply start with a, mount, a safe mounting medium, uh, try to experiment around with, with clear nail polish um, and uh, see which uh, specimens work uh, with clear nail polish. When you use clear nail polish just make sure that the specimen does not contain any water, that is really important. 
Um, so if you, for example, want to mount insect wings, uh, then take an insect wing, either let it dry completely or transfer it first into alcohol, uh, yeah, pure, pure alcohol um, or isopropyl alcohol also works. And then shake off the alcohol and transfer it into a nail polish remover or acetone. This removes the rest of the water and also the alcohol. And then you can try to mount the insect wing directly in a little bit of clear nail polish. You put a little drop uh, first on the slide, put the insect wing into it, put a drop of clear nail polish on top of it, and then you put a cover glass on top of it. Okay, this would be actually my suggestion. Um, and uh, then you basically uh, experiment around and you see how, how well this works. And then um, don't be disappointed if there are too many air bubbles uh, forming, um, usually towards the end of the drying time, but then maybe it's gonna still work out. Okay, you might want to add maybe a little bit more nail polish than on the side to fill out those air bubbles. Again, that's something where you have to um, experiment around with. I think your question really relates also a little bit uh, to, is more general, is, is uh, after you've already done the first steps of microscopy, uh, where to go from there? Um, there is the danger of boredom maybe setting in because you've observed all your water samples already and uh, you wanna see new things, you want to try out new things, so what to do? And I can recommend that um, also another thing is, is um, that you, yes, as you mentioned yourself, do a little bit more research yourself and maybe go away from the microscopy itself more towards biology. Maybe buy some books where you can do some identification of water microorganisms. This would be also a possibility. So you try to use uh, the microscope also in, as a means to study your environment, as a tool to study your environment. And so far also in this channel um, and also in my other channel, I've used the microscope for the sake of, of using a microscope because it's fun to observe the environment. I've not been going very much deep into the uh, biology uh, direction. Yeah, we're about identification and so on and studying the subcellular structures and so on or taxonomy. I've not been doing this. Um, I try to keep it a, a very general and basic um, but uh, if you actually buy yourself some books and do some reading around it and reading around the context a little bit then this can also keep uh, people motivated. Um, other people like to tinker around and they like to upgrade the microscope. Even that is a little bit limited sometimes. Uh, but essentially there are many possibilities that you can, can try. And uh, of course also maybe join the web forum a little bit and, and, and read a little bit what other people are doing. Um, there is uh, quite a little bit of activity going on in Reddit and in microscopy. Um, subreddit and and so on yeah um, what I've done also um, you might check out some of my older videos <laughs> I even went as far as trying to make my own slide boxes of course you can buy them uh, relatively cheaply as well but I also tried to make my own slide boxes um, I tried uh, paper wrapping of permanent slides uh, to make uh, them look nicer and also to make them a little bit more stable that's also something I tried. I tried to make also my own filters, dark field filters and Weinberg uh, filters. There's plenty of experimentation possible there as well. Um, yeah, so my suggestion is is um, simply to to um, yeah pick a maybe a, a subtopic and try to gain a little bit of uh, experience and not only rely on me making videos as much as I like that, <laughs> of course, uh, as you said uh, yourself, uh, that you watched a lot of my videos, which is of course great. Um, but I encourage uh, people kind of also to, to experiment around a little bit and not to be afraid of failures. Um, yeah, I've had a lot of failures and experimentation in the past. And that's how I was able to build my knowledge a little bit, okay? Yeah, uh, so that's basically what I want to, to say now. Um, yeah, I think I'm just gonna leave it at that. Uh, please do leave your comments. Happy microbe hunting as always and uh, see you around. Bye-bye.